<laughs> we're going to be talking about bone graft. So your workhorse is going to be your allograft. Uh, you can get it from Neodent. You can get it from Maxius. There's a lot of different vendors. These are the two I use in private practice. And these are the two you're going to see here at Colorado Surgical Institute. So a few things. Cortical cancellus is what we're gonna use here. There's a lot of different variations, whether it's mineralized or demineralized. We're gonna use the mineralized cortical cancellus. So this is gonna be the what you're gonna use for the vast majority of your cases. Uh, Mac, where, where are you kind of seeing us use this? Uh, yeah, like you said, pretty much everything. Single implants, um, single extractions, full mouth extractions, full arch, um, any type of surgery but wisdom teeth, I basically grab it for. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you stock up plenty of this. Um, every once in a while, you're going to go through a lot of it. It kind of like ebbs and flows with the grafting in your, in your practice, where one day, you know, you're going to go show up and not have any. So it's always good to have extra bone graft in your practice, at least of this one. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to move over to, to the xenograft. So you can have, it's typically bovine. And so the xenograft here is going to be in scenarios where you want it to last longer. And so if you're looking for the particulate to stay around longer, um, then the xenograft is going to be what you're going to use. So imagine these are going to be good for four wall defects and your xenograft is going to be good if there's a three wall defect or a two wall defect. So if you're missing a buckle plate or a palatal wall, what I like to do is I do the sandwich technique where I'll put xeno on one side and xeno on the other side, and then I'll fill the middle with your cortical cancellus. So the xenograft will not turn over well. When you go back in and flap this thing in like six months, you're gonna see a lot of the xenograft particulate. It has not turned over. The body takes a very long time to break it down and then to rebuild it. Um, and so from that perspective, I don't like it inside where the implants are gonna be, but some people like to mix it all together and then just have one amalgamation of all their bone graft material. So picture your xenograft is there to hold the presence of that grafting material and the volume for a longer period of time. Your, is there one or the other that you prefer for sinus lift? For a sinus lift, I use more cortical analysis. Now if I'm doing, a, and that's a good question, so I appreciate it, Michaela. Mm -hmm. um, the xenograft I would use in a lateral. So some people have done like a layer technique with their, their bone graft in their lateral sinuses, where you do autogenous on the bottom or the floor of the sinus. Then you do a layer of uh, cortical cancellus and then you do xenograft at the top. So the xenograft at the top is gonna hold the volume up a little bit more. And then also your xenograft can be used over your block rafts or any type of like really big ridge augmentations on the outside of it to hold that volume a little bit longer. Bioceramics. I don't really use this as much as typically speaking, if there's a religious preference on not having um, bovine bone or autogenous bone that comes from the hospital. And of course, that's how I tell patients, hey, it comes from the hospital, we just get smaller portions of it. You know, like a Jehovah's Witness or someone who is uh, devout with any type of religious preference, the bioceramics is gonna be where you wanna go. Uh, it will turn over well, but it takes a little bit longer. And at the end of the day, uh, it's, a, it's bigger in the European countries. It, it proves to be just as effective, but just know the material well. Here in the States, I think the cortical cancellus works a little bit better. Now we get to the safe scraper. Um, autogenous bone, like we've talked about in previous videos, it has the trifecta. It has osteogenic, it's osteoconductive, and it's osteoinductive. So with that said, this safe scraper here, there's gonna be a tip right on the end. A lot of people use the wrong end and they wonder why it's not scraping, so make sure you use the right end. You can harvest an obscene amount of autogenous bone. So if you're gonna use the safe scraper, you have to make your flap really large and you scrape the cortical bone away and you can harvest a lot of it. And what do we like about this is you don't have to grind it up. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're harvesting autogenous bone with the, with the um, double action rongeurs, then you got this big you know, cortical shells that you have to kind of grind up. And then it takes someone else like Mac and me who are still working. Yeah. And we got to page someone else to come in and grind up the bone. So the safe scraper, I'm not entirely sure how expensive they are, but they're worth to have at least one box in your office. Whenever I get into a situation where I just really need to throw the kitchen sink at someone, or I really need a big graft to take well, the safe scraper is going to work really nicely in these areas and then you can mix it in with any of this stuff over here. It works well everywhere. Autogenous bone is going to be the best thing you can use and so the safe scrapers are one of my favorite things these days.
Um, anything. That's also our, our backup if we can't use a double action on Jura. We ceramic burr, if you can't use that, um, mm -hmm. this is our backup. And okay. we'll scrape on the arch. Yep. So these are synthetic plugs. You know, there's Osteogen plugs, Osteomax plugs. You know, there's a lot of different companies that have these plugs. So at the end of the day, um, if you have a four walled site, all the walls are intact. You can take a few of these and jam them in there, or you can put it into your wisdom tooth sites. Um, I'm not a huge fan, personally speaking, but it's an easier way to have some kind of socket preservation occur. Um, but what I've found is if you re-enter the site on these three to four months later, the bone is still really, really soft. It hasn't turned over uh, as much. And so this is more of a wait, like a you know six month type of thing to wait for the bone to turn over enough where you can get good stability in these sites. So quite frankly, I think if you have a good sound technique and for whatever reason you're not pressed for time, um, I would say this is just a nice backup to have. But again, to each their own. I know a lot of great surgeons who are using this regularly and they are still billing out bone grafting uh, because it does say on here that it's a bone graft composite plug, which allows you to still bill out your bone grafting uh, CDT code. Your Nova bone over here, uh, this is good for your vertical sinus lifts. It has a pretty slick system where a cartridge where you basically just hydraulically like pump this, um, this uh, like putty material into the sinus and it's a mixture of uh, different types of bone. So it says on here, it's a bioactive synthetic bone graft and it's a putty that basically you can inject into the sinus It'll lift up the Schneiderian membrane. It doesn't have all that like particulate on there, so it's not gonna tear it as easily. And uh, it's a good thing to have as an adjunct on your vertical sinus lifts if needed. The next thing we have here is our bone blocks from Rocky Mountain Tissue Bank, actually based out of here in Colorado. So it's a vertebral block raft. What I like about this is that outer shell that's cortical, the inner part is spongy. So when I actually take it and I press it against the ridge, it will compress the spongy side down so it can conform to the ridge and it can adapt really nicely. And then when the screw comes in and fixates it down, it really adapts it nicely to the maxilla or mandible wherever you're using it. Um, so that's where we get it. You can also get a PA zone. You can harvest it from the mandible and get autogenous bone, but this tends to be easier. It doesn't introduce a secondary surgical site. And then sometimes you're not comfortable going all the way back there with this big reflection to take a block of uh, autogenous bone. This is already present and ready for you and have a very high success rate. So at the end of the day, um, the Rocky Mountain Tissue Bank bone blocks are something that we really, really love. And we use here hands-on at the courses. Um, Michaela's going to talk to you about the metronidazole. Uh, we love this stuff. Mm -hmm. So for the metro, um, we use this in the bone grafting as well as the PRF juice um, just for hydration. Anytime we put the bone graft into the um, sterile bowl, uh, we just don't want to leave it there unhydrated. So we always put some metro in there uh, in the PRF. Yep. This stuff is so cheap. I think we have 20 bags of it that we bought in one box and we had gone through it and it's been a very long time. The metronidazole works really, really well. We were using gentamicin at one point and I think COVID hit and the price of gentamicin went high up. This works well to hydrate everything. Like you said, you can hydrate your membranes, your bone grafts, everything. Uh, and it really is another thing you can throw at a patient to hopefully prevent uh, a bacterial infection. Um, and so when we use it in our cases, we have a slightly higher percentage of a success rate. Mm -hmm. It's so cheap. There's no reason why we shouldn't include it in what we're doing. So that essentially covers everything with bone grafting. Understand it's nuanced and it's very situational. When we're doing these courses, we want you to treat the bone grafting like you would in a private practice. So if you talk to your mentor about, hey, I'd like to see Xeno and I'd like to see some allograft or can I try a bone scraper? If it's clinically applicable in that situation and it's going to be right for the patient, 100% we want you to get hands-on experience with it. Just know, speak to your mentor about how and when to utilize certain uh, of these modalities because we do want you getting experience with as, with as much uh, product as possible.